If you are somehow living in Vienna, Austria, you should really know that the Slash Film Festival is opening today and one recommendation I got for you is Nightmare Cinema. If you're not living here, which is way more likely, I think the film is scheduled in the US for February next year. Either way, here's my review of it. Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and you might be wondering what's with the strange colors and the different background. Well that's because in October I'm planning to do the Halloween Horror Month where we'll talk about all kinds of different horror films. Newer ones, older ones and also ones from India. And today I give you a little preview with my recommendation for the Slash Film Festival Nightmare Cinema. I'm always skeptical when it comes to anthology movies. Movies that feature different little stories normally told in different smaller segments that are often written and directed by different filmmakers. It can be difficult to find a thematical through line and almost always certain parts turn out to be much better than others. With Nightmare Cinema it's pretty much the same, but overall it's definitely a very nice treat for horror fans. It clocks in at pretty much exactly two hours and it features five different stories which aren't really connected at all and whose titles and directors one only finds out in the end credits. What all of them is holding together, if only very thinly, is that they begin when some person enters this mysterious cinema. The whole auditorium is empty, it's just them being pulled in and when the projection starts they find themselves in a horror story. It's as if you go to sleep and have a horrible nightmare but you don't know that you're sleeping, so everything seems really happening. The cinema has this very peculiar projectionist played by Mickey Rourke. It's a little bit reminiscent of Tales from the Crypt with him being the crypt keeper who is responsible for the episodes to start. But to be honest this whole framing has really not much to say. It's hinted at that what the people are experiencing on screen is based on their darkest fears but that's as generic as it can be for narrative motivation. But since those cinema segments are reduced to a minimum anyway, it's no big deal. But I found it interesting that those scenes and the very last episode were written and directed by Mick Garris and I thought that material was the weakest. But speaking about the five stories, the last one titled Dead in the end credits was very disappointing for me, but the very first was without a doubt my absolute favorite and I would even regard it as an almost perfect 20 minute horror short. I don't want to give too much away but it plays as a very violent, splatter-like homage to old slasher films with an extremely neat twist on it. It's bloody, fast paced, well shot and extremely comedic and entertaining from beginning to end. It also delivers a nice mixture of practical and computer generated effects. It goes by the title The Thing in the Woods and was written and directed by Alejandro Burgues. The second episode called Mirari was created by one of the cult directors of the genre, Joel Dante, whose most beloved film is of course Gremlins. It tells the story of a young woman who has one side of her face covered by scar tissue. She is about to meet her boyfriend's mother for the first time, who is apparently this beautiful woman. But before she does so, she decides, with a lot of help from her boyfriend, to undergo surgery at a beauty clinic. The main focus of the short is on her time mostly covered under a lot of bandages at that very menacing beauty clinic and Joe Dante does a terrific job in creating a very dark and eerie atmosphere. At the same time it's always pretty clear that this story directly criticizes the obsession with those kind of operations and the crazy ideals of looking perfect and also forever young. I thought it was maybe a bit too overt and a twist if you want to call it that is also quite predictable and cheap. It all feels like an updated but not as clever version of the famous Twilight Zone episode Eye of the Beholder. But because of the dense atmosphere and the short runtime it's still absolutely alright altogether. Now all episodes have a distinct style which tends to be very flashy and pop like and the third episode titled Mashid and directed by Ryuhei Kitamura is probably the most pulpy one which isn't a negative per se. Its story is set in a catholic orphanage and it features a priest saying such things as FIGHT THE GODDAMN DEVIL. This one leans more towards CGI but there are some crazy bloody and downright sinister moments in it that I really enjoyed. 
It has also easily the greatest score in the whole movie and the big explosions of music reminded me a lot of Goblin scores for many of Dario Argento's movies back in the 70s and 80s. Overall it's another fun segment even though it doesn't feel as coherent and fresh as the first two. Now the fourth one is probably the weirdest, most fascinating tone of them all. This one is titled This Way to Egress, was directed by David Slade and is all in black and white. It features a mother and her two sons and there isn't that much story to it. This one is all about atmosphere and the feeling of going mad. It looks absolutely disgusting at times and that's exactly what it's going for. Again not as nicely wrapped as the first two, but with its theme of mental illness, at least that's what I'm getting from it, it fits that it is kind of vague and ambivalent at the end. Now I've already said that I found the last story to be the weakest and that's a shame, because a movie like this should better end on a high. First I was quite intrigued simply by the fact that each story is very different from each other and this one starts with a psychopath killing the parents of a young boy and also wounding him severely. He wakes up in a hospital after being dead for several minutes, hence the title, dead. What I liked about this one was the connection between the kid and another young patient, but unfortunately that relationship is tossed out the window way too quickly. There's also this sixth sense element to it, but they don't do enough with it and it doesn't come together well. So to conclude, overall Nightmare Cinema is a pretty good horror anthology with many highlights in it. Each episode has something great going for it, with the exception of the last one for me. In sum, you get one absolutely fantastic one, three nice, two good ones and one mediocre. So in German I'd say, Nightmare Cinema ist ein wirklich sehr unterhaltsames Kuriositätenkabinett an Horror-Kurzgeschichten und auch wenn die Qualität der einzelnen Episoden schwankt, insgesamt ist das Ganze doch äußerst kurzweilig und sehenswert. I give Nightmare Cinema 7 out of 10. It's more like 6.9, but I don't do that. Alright, that's it like always. Comment below and let me know what you think about Nightmare Cinema. Have you heard about the film? Have you seen it? And if so, what is your favorite episode? And what's your least favorite episode? And also what's your favorite horror anthology movie? You can hit me up on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram simply at the Jimmy Cage. And if you enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell for all I have to tell.